Do you take an aspirin a day to ward off heart attacks? Many of us do, but now the FDA warning people who have never had a heart attack that a daily dose of aspirin is not in their best interest. Dr. Stephen Reisman, director of the New York Cardiac Diagnostic Center, joins me now with his take. So this reverses years of advice from doctors all over the country. Why? Well, the FDA only really has approved in the past secondary prevention, which means if you had a heart attack, you had a, a blockage, you had a stent, then you should take aspirin. What we're really talking about now is primary prevention. Are you at high risk for heart disease, but you're not documented to have it, should you take aspirin? And they did a, a very long study over approximately 10 years of analysis, and they came to the conclusions that the studies don't show any definite benefit of the, for, those group of, for that group of people. The people who are at risk of heart attack or, ne or had one already? For people who are at risk of heart attack, who never had a heart attack, they feel that the evidence does not, the, the benefit doesn't outweigh the risk. Now, the American Heart Association, in some of their guidelines, have suggested that in certain of these individuals, it is worthwhile to treat prophylactically with aspirin. I've been taking baby aspirin for I don't know how long. Here's what the FDA said in detail. The FDA has concluded that the data does not support the use of aspirin as a preventative medication by people who have not had a heart attack, stroke, or cardiovascular problems. In such people, the benefit has not been established, but risks such as dangerous bleeding in the brain or stomach are still present. So it's really weighing two different risks here basically exactly it's weighing the benefit and the risk and you know there's a definite risk with aspirin it's not an innocuous uh, medication even though it's over the counter it can clearly cause bleeding both gastrointestinal and even intracerebral there's uh, allergic reactions and you have to just be aware of that so in an older patient population for instance who are at risk of falling and hitting their head there may be a greater risk of having intracerebral hemorrhage than of preventing a heart attack that has to be weighed by the doctor in our office what we do is we focus in and try to really determine the risk with various types of testing. I've got to tell you, I think that the individual doctor who knows you and knows your habits and makes these calls, that's the way to go, to get the, your physician to tell you what to do. This was all brought up, though, because Bayer wanted to change its labeling and really market itself as a sort of a solution for heart attacks, I guess. Do you agree with what the FDA did in saying they shouldn't do that? Well, it's interesting. What the FDA did is they sent out a, they put a 20-page letter to Bayer a few days ago, and they did a, a very nice analysis of all the studies over the last 10 years that they could find relating to this. And they pretty much clearly showed that there's no great benefit for that group of people who haven't had a problem to take aspirin. They did leave the door open saying, look, there are still some ongoing studies, and let's see what happens over time. But at the present time, we really can't recommend it preventatively for people who have an increased risk of heart disease if they haven't had a problem. They did still agree that we're going to continue with secondary prevention. If you had a heart attack, if you had a stent, if you have angina, if you have those type of issues, you should be taking what's called secondary prevention. Take a baby aspirin a day. But of course, only with a doctor's advice. You have to make sure you're not at risk for bleeding. Well, okay, so give me some advice here. If you're one of these people who think you may be at risk or your doctor has told you you're at risk, what kinds of things should you be doing? Exactly. So what you should be doing, you should undergo your risk analysis of, for cardiovascular disease. Look at if you have diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, family history, smoking. And then if you fall into that higher risk category, for instance, in our office, we'll put you under a stress test and see, are, are you really having an issue? What well, about diet and exercise? Well, diet and exercise is part of prevention. That's an easy prevention because there's no real risk involved. The risk is really with aspirin, with bleeding. So everybody should have a healthy diet. I always like the Mediterranean diet. And you should undergo exercise, at least 30 minutes of vigorous walking a day, five days a week. Everybody can do that. There's no there's no risk it's only benefit aspirin has has risk and that's the problem and you have to just check with your doctor if you want to be on aspirin to know what if you're at risk for that dr steve thank you thank you for having me